Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you guys how to do the running back zero draft strategy, and I'm going to be showing it off in a mock draft. I'll probably do a couple of these throughout the offseason to explain the strategy from different points of the draft. Now, typically with running back zero, what running back zero means is in the first few rounds, so the first, I'd say, four or five rounds, you just target every other position besides running back, so you can go quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, but no running backs. Now, I typically find that this strategy actually works the best when you're drafting towards the back part of the draft. So, you're in a 10-team league, you want to be around spots 7, 8, 9, 10, kind of closer to the middle, but also towards the end, from the middle to the end is where I find it the best for running back zero, because you can get two stud wide receivers at the back of the first round and at the start of the second round. So, for the purpose of this video, it's a 12-team league. We're going to be going with the 10th position. Now, if you're in a 14-team league, I highly advise not doing the running back zero strategy because I just think the running back talent falls off so much faster in a 14 team league in a 12 team league it's okay I don't necessarily love doing this strategy but I do like to show you guys something different considering on my channel I typically like to get two running backs early in the draft out of the first three rounds I typically go two running backs so in this draft we are going to be doing it completely differently let me know down below in the comments if you guys have actually used the running back zero strategy and have found success with it in your guys league so this mock draft it is a 12 team PPR 10th position mock draft. The roster positions are one quarterback, two running backs, two wideouts, tight end, uh, kicker, defense, flex, and six bench spots. So we're going to get right into it using fantasypros.com. So in this draft, like I said, we're doing, since we're doing running back zero, we are obviously going to be attacking the wide receiver position. We're going to see what falls to us because right now I'm just going to go ahead and assume that Michael Thomas is off the board and he was. So looking at the draft board real quick, Chris McCaffrey was the first pick followed by Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott, Michael Thomas, Dalvin Cook, Devontae Adams, Nikhil Harry, and Joe Mixon. So very typical, very, very typical start of the draft. The first nine picks very chalk. Michael Thomas typically goes from pick one to five. I rarely ever see him in these mocks fall past the fifth pick. Devontae Adams, the second best wide receiver to me, potentially could be the number one wide receiver in fantasy football this year, comes at the seventh overall pick. The rest of it is very chalk. Dalvin Cook typically goes after guys like uh, McCaffrey, Saquon, Zeke, and sometimes he goes before Kamara, but he goes after those three guys. To me, those are the big three running backs. McCaffrey is one for me, then Saquon, and then Ezekiel Elliott. So I think picking Kamara over Zeke is kind of crazy. Not really crazy, to be honest with you, because you can do whatever you want, but that's not what I would have liked to do. So like I said, since we're doing a zero RB strategy, we're going to go ahead and get the best wide receiver on the board. Now, this is actually a tough decision. There are two guys on here that I'd be looking at. That's Julio Jones and Tyreek Hill. Now, do I want to start off my team, the guy that to me, he's not really boom or bust in Tyreek Hill, but he's a guy who has those great games that completely win you a week, but then he has games where he disappoints you. Or would I rather have a guy that's super duper safe? Now, I know Julio Jones is getting old, but he is Mr. Matt Ryan's number one target in Atlanta, and I think I'm going go with the safer option here at the 110 and secure Julio Jones of the Atlanta Falcons. I can see an argument for Tyreek Hill, but I'd rather go safety because I like to go with the safe picks in the early rounds of the draft. So after we went ahead and drafted Julio Jones, you can see on the side of the screen that DeAndre Hopkins was selected, followed by Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, and Tyreek Hill. So now we are back at our pick yet again. So looking at the board, this is a very, very typical first two rounds of a fantasy draft. Uh, mostly running backs go in the first round, only four wide receivers. I've been in drafts where only three wide receivers go or only two wide receivers go in the first round of the draft. So like I said at the beginning of the video, why I like drafting wide receivers at the back part, this is why I think the running back zero strategy works better at the back part of the draft is because right now there are so many names that I can get at the wide receiver position right here that I'd probably, if I'm being honest with you, be happy with. Guys like Chris Robin or Chris Godwin, Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay. But I'm going to go ahead and get a wide receiver who I think is honestly a bit better than the rest, and that's Chris Godwin to me. I know Tom Brady is not the quarterback that Jameis Winston is. Tom Brady's better than Jameis, but he's not going to air the ball out as much as Jameis. Jameis. Now, there's that notion that Mr. Brady loves to throw the ball to the slot wide receiver. Chris Godwin's the slot guy. 
but I don't really believe that. He throws the ball to the best wide receiver, and the best wide receiver for the last five years on the New England Patriots is no other than his slot receiver in Julian Edelman. That's why Julian Edelman was getting so many targets, so I don't necessarily buy into that narrative, but what I do buy into the narrative is the fact that he's going to target the most, the guy who's going to be most likely open in the middle of the field, and that's going to be Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin last year finished inside of the top 10 at the wide receiver position, probably could have been the number two guy if he did not get end up getting hurt later in the season. He missed a few games late in the season, but with that said, Chris Godwin is going to be a very safe pick this year with Mr. TB12 at the helm at the quarterback position in Tampa Bay. So after we went with Chris Godwin now is when if we weren't doing running back zero, you have to get a running back here if we're not doing running back zero. That's 100% what I would do. But like I said, we're not doing what we would normally do. We're doing running back zero, and we are going to commit to that. So looking at the draft board right now, after we went with Chris Godwin, Leonard Fournette came off the board, followed by Aaron Jones, then Austin Eckler. Now that to me is a bit ass backwards. Why would you want Aaron Jones or Leonard Fournette over Austin Eckler, who's like CMC light, mini CMC? I don't get it. Then Miles Sanders. Now Miles Sanders is in a situation right now that is kind of confusing because they have not yet brought in another running back to be that guy behind Miles Sanders. Will they eventually? I'm pretty sure. But with that said, who really knows? They eventually could just not do it, and it'll be Boston Scott and Miles Sanders, and in that case, that is a great situation. After we uh, Miles Sanders came off the board, then the other guy on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Mike Evans, went very good pick there. I think Mike Evans is going to be good this year. I just think Chris Godwin is much safer. Followed by Kenya Drake, Travis Kelsey, Kenny Galladay, George Kittle, Amari Cooper, Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, DJ Moore, Odell Beckham Jr., Adam Thielen, Thielen and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Now, the two tight ends, the first two tight ends typically come off the board around the second and third round, proved to be typical yet again in this mock draft. And then Lamar Jackson and Pat Mahomes were picked in the third round. The two best quarterbacks also get picked early in the draft. That's going to be very typical. Some leagues, you will see the quarterbacks go off in the first round. In other leagues, when you're in more leagues with people who are much more sharp, people who are not just normal people, people who watch fantasy videos, they follow the fantasy community, those kind of people typically wait on the quarterback position. So with that said, right now, something I also want to bring up actually is Sir Isaac Newton, like Sir Isaac Newton, ah, ha, ha, so funny, picked Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, and Al Robinson. They have done the zero running back strategy, but they were at pick five. So it does work anywhere in the draft. I just prefer to be in the back part of the draft. So looking at the board right now, we are going to be looking for another wide receiver here. So right now, looking at our team, we have Mr. Julio Jones and Chris Godwin. To me, we have two very safe options at the wide receiver position. Now, do we want to go with higher upside or do we want to go with a more safe pick? So to me, the safest pick here would be Robert Woods or Calvin Ridley. I really think Calvin Ridley is going to have a breakout year this year, but I think we can get him probably in the next round if we wanted. But since we're only starting two wide receivers in this league, I'd probably go tight end or quarterback. So looking right now, Cal it's either between Robert Woods, Calvin Ridley, and Juju Smith-Schuster. Now, I don't like Juju Smith-Schuster. I really don't. I'm just kind of confused about his situation. The guy's very talented. In 2018, this guy was absolutely fucking ass at the wide receiver position. He was destroying these defenses. He was doing amazing. And then next year, he does terrible. But why does he do terrible? Well, one, he was getting banged up. Two, Big Ben ended up getting hurt. So if Big Ben can stay healthy and he can stay healthy, this is an A1 situation. Juju Smith-Schuster will likely get to move back into the slot position where he was so dominant when AB was on the team. They bring in other wide receivers around him. So they have Deontay Johnson, who was obviously there last year, and then they draft the wide receiver. So that's great for the Pittsburgh offense. So you could go with Juju here, but I am more prone to go with a safer type of pick here. I typically go safer picks in the first three rounds because you want to make sure your first couple of picks are very safe so that they don't bust. If you, if you pick a guy here like Juju, I could completely see him busting. So I'm going to go with Robert Woods here out of the LA Rams. Now last year, Robert Woods' beginning and second half of the season looked like two completely different things. The first half of the season, this guy looked like a goddamn garbage can. Second half of the season, this guy was absolutely tearing it up in LA, and I think it's going to look more like the second half of the season for the LA Rams. I think they have a bounce back year after being in the Super Bowl the year before. Last year, they looked like the Super Bowl rejects, the team who cannot bounce back, but I think they're going to bounce back this year and not have that Super Bowl hangover. So I'm going to go with Robert Woods here in the third round to fill out my flex position. Now, if you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button. Now, looking at the draft, 
draft board after we made our selection of Robert Woods. Le'Veon Bell came off the board, followed by Mark Andrews, T.Y. Hilton, and Todd Gurley. So a pick I really wanted there would have been Mark Andrews. I think that Mark Andrews is honestly going to have another great season in 2020. They ship off his competition in Hayden Hurst, and he goes to Atlanta. So I think that this year, Mark Andrews' numbers, while they were crazy last year, could be even better this year. And I would not be surprised if he finished inside of the top two at the tight end position. Obviously, Kelsey, Kittle, and him are the big three tight ends to me. So now looking at the board, I don't really like taking a quarterback early. I don't really like taking any of the tight ends that are still available. Guys like Ertz, Waller, Henry, Evan Ingram. I'd much rather wait till later. So I'm probably going to have to go ahead and do something different to what I normally do. I typically stray away from the quarterback position, but right here is where I would want to go ahead and get it if I am going with the RB0 strategy, typically four or five rounds without drafting a running back. So we're going to go ahead and select Dak Prescott here to me. He has not been signed yet, but he's going to sign. He is going to play this year, and he's going to tear it up. There's no way, in my opinion, that he holds out. He has his contract for this year. It's what holds out for the future for Dak Prescott. So I think Dak Prescott plays this year. I think he tears it up his wide receiver core wide don't like Amari Cooper, still talented. Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, and then Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott, who can dump the ball off to. I think Dak has another great season last year, finished as quarterback two. Would not be surprised if he was right around there, quarterback three. I think he's very safe, especially since the Dallas Cowboys play in the easiest division in football. The Cowboys can easily torch the Redskins and the Giants, the Eagles, it's more up in the air, even though the Eagles' defense is young. So I think that Dak Prescott could probably have his way with the Eagles' defense. So that's the quarterback I'm going to go with here for the running back zero strategy. Now, right here, we have made it through four rounds. If the, It's probably right here where I have to pick a running back. The running back core right now is going to be absolutely eviscerated. So we're going to have to go ahead and make some selections that are going to be a little bit more risky. That's what happens when you go with the zero running back strategy. You're stuck doing things that are a bit more risky than you would typically do. After we picked Dak Prescott, Zach Ertz came off the board, followed by Juju Smith-Schuster, Keenan Allen, A.J. Brown, Chris Carson, Cortland Sutton, Calvin Ridley, David Johnson, Kareem Hunt, D.K. Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Melvin Gordon, Devontae Parker, Jonathan Taylor, D.J. Chark, Darren Waller, Deshaun Watson, and Stephon Diggs. The most surprising pick out of all of those picks to me is Mr. Chris Carson. Now, I really was a fan of Chris Carson, but they ended up bringing in a running back to be kind of the backup for Chris Carson or to be kind of the one-two punch because Mr. Mr. Uh, what's his name? The gum chewer, Pete Carroll, loves, loves, loves that running back by committee. While it had to have been Chris Carson last year because everyone else got hurt behind him, now there's going to be trouble in paradise for Chris Carson. So I'm kind of avoiding him in the fourth round. I would be much happier with him in the fifth round. So now we have to draft a running back. The running back core is absolutely garbage. And we're going to have to figure out here who we want with the high upside picks. Another pick that I really actually liked was in Mr. David Johnson. I really like and Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt is a very safe pick, and in a running back zero type of situation, I would have liked to get one safe running back, but when you're doing running back zero, what you want to do is take a lot of running backs right now. You're probably not going to draft another wide receiver for a decent amount of time. We're just going to try and hit on all of these running backs. So the first guy we're going to go and attack here is David Montgomery. Now, David Montgomery last year did not put up the numbers you wanted. He put it, played in 16 games, 242 touches, 889 yards, 25 receptions, 185 receiving yards, 7 touchdowns, 2 fumbles. So not the greatest, but not terrible. Now, in 2020, I think he has a bounce-back year because everyone assumed that David Montgomery was the second coming of fantasy football Jesus Christ. They thought that David Montgomery was Barry Sanders with LT's vision, with all these things to make a super running back, and he just didn't show up to be that. But he did show up, and I think that David Montgomery will be much better when Nick Foles is the quarterback because when Mitch Trubisky is the quarterback, this guy can't see the left side of the field. It's like his left eye is permanently fucking closed like he's a goddamn pirate, and he just throw and he just throws it to the right side of the field. So now, without that, they can actually run the ball. With a good quarterback, you're not going to be down in games where you can run the ball. The defense had a bad year in comparison to the year before. I think they bounce back and have a better year so they can run the goddamn ball. David Montgomery is not going to get any pass catching opportunities. His 25 receptions that he got to me seems like the ceiling for him. The ceiling all the way up here, the floor is like 15. The ceiling's probably 30, 35. He is not going to get that many receptions as long as Tariq Cohen is healthy. If Tariq Cohen ends up dying out there because he's 5'6 and a guy just crushes him, then David Montgomery could be very involved in the passing and running game, and I love that, but as long as Tariq Cohen is there, you got to temper your expectations for the passing game for David Montgomery. So after we went with David Montgomery, we're going to have to attack the running back position 
yet again. Now, looking at the draft board, a lot of guys have been taken that I actually would have considered had it not have drafted Dak Prescott, AJ Green, Devin Singletary, Kyler Murray, and then Russell Wilson. I like Kyler's value in the sixth round. Same with Russ's, but like I said, typically I wait on the quarterback position. Now, a pick I hate, AJ Green in the fifth round. Why do this? This motherfucker has missed more than half of his games. More than half of his games in the last four seasons. Why do you want to draft that? Why do you want to draft a guy that gets hurt lacing his cleats? He fucking brushes his teeth, he accidentally stabs himself, and he dies, and he's out for three weeks. That's just what happens with A.J. Green. I don't want anything to do with him. Luckily, no one drafted a running back besides Devin Singletary, so we can go ahead and get another running back here. And to me, it is Raheem Mostert. It is a very easy pick. Raheem Mostert will be the head back in that running back by committee. I know it's a running back by committee, but what I do know is that Raheem Mostert last year showed his talent. Matt Burita gets shipped off to Miami, which is great. Not great for the 49ers because Raheem, not Raheem Mostert, because Mr. Matt Breida was actually talented, but great for Raheem Mostert's situation. Raheem Mostert now will establish himself as that guy. The guys behind him, Jarek McKinnon, that motherfucker gets hurt as well every single day, so it doesn't matter. I love Raheem Mostert here. I think he has a great season with the San Francisco 49ers. The only issue with Raheem Mostert and Matt Breida is those guys legitimately, it'll say they're hurt every week and they just end up playing, so you gotta be worried, or you gotta be ready for for that cue on your goddamn lineup because he's always, he's going to be questionable, but he's always going to play. So if you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please click that subscribe button. Now, looking after we made our selection of Raheem Mostert, Tyler Boyd came out the board, followed by Jarvis Landry, James Conner, Evan Ingram, Hunter Henry, Rob Gronkowski, Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuel, Julian Edelman, DeAndre Swift, Michael Gallup, Will Fuller, Tom Brady, Josh Allen, Tariq Cohen, Drew Brees, Mark Ingram, Carson Wentz. What a fall for Josh Allen. In the seventh round, you have to pick Josh Allen. Josh Allen is an unreal talent. His rushing upside is amazing. He's probably going to rush for seven touchdowns, rush for a couple hundred yards, rush for like 20 yards a game, give you that boosted stats, and when he runs into touchdown, if it's in a four-point passing touchdown league, you get more points. So now we're going to have to go ahead and attack the running bike position again. And here we're going to take a more risky pick, but a pick that I don't believe is risky, but some people do. And that's Cam Akers out of FSU, Florida State University. He gets drafted in the second round to become an LA Ram. Now the second round was their first pick in the draft. They spent their first pick in the draft on Cam Akers. What does Sean McVay want to do? He wants a workhorse like Todd Gurley. He was Todd Gurley would have been a workhorse if his knee didn't work like your great, 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 great grandfather. She has that arthritis knee. Cam Akers does not. McVay will run Cam Akers a zillion times a game. Cam Akers is better than Darrell Henderson. Cam Akers is better than Malcolm Brown. Now, I'm not saying week one Cam Akers will be the starter. I think it might take some time, especially if all these things end up getting canceled because of Corona. But as long as they play week one, like three weeks in, Cam Akers will evolve as the starter. He's my RB3, so I can have him ride the pine. And then eventually, he makes it up to the big leagues and he gets to be my RB2. I think Cam Akers has RB2 upside. I think he could even be a top 12 running back, given the amount of volume that I could see Cameron Akers getting in 2020 now. After we made our selection, it's probably going to be wide receiver heaven because that's what happens in the draft. The running backs go early, and then in the middle rounds is where you see all the wide receivers typically fly off the board. Guys like Marvin Jones, Tyler Boyd, Terry McLaurin, all flying off the board in the middle of the draft. So after we went with Cam Akers, a wide receiver frenzy came off the board because everyone drafts the running backs early. So Hollywood Brown, uh, Brandon Cooks, Darius Slayton, Marvin Jones. So now we're going to hit on yet another running back probably before going to the tight end well or the wide receiver well. Now looking at the tight end position, Tyler Higby still available, who I actually am kind of moving up on. I think that Tyler Higby is going to be very productive in this LA Rams offense, but I prefer to go ahead and get a different player here. And we are going to go ahead and select probably a wide receiver actually. Even though I wanted to go running back, I think that someone will probably fall to me in the next round that I would be much happier with than any of these guys, but I may actually go ahead and pick a guy because I want to talk about him, and that's Sony Michelle. Now, Sony Michelle, just like Todd Gurley, has that knee arthritis, but, 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 Bill Belichick likes that RBBC. He likes that running back by committee, so that's going to be a concern for some people. So, with that said, 
But this running back by committee does not necessarily worry me because last season, Sony Michelle had more yards than Dave Montgomery. He put up seven touchdowns. He had a good season. And I think in 2020, he will have a good season again. Now, do I think he's going to be an RB2 like most thought last year? Probably not. I think he'll be more of an RB3, a guy you've thrown in the flex, a guy you've thrown as your RB2 if you're in a pickle, and a guy that's on the New England Patriots. Now, the New England Patriots have taken a fall like Humpty Dumpty off that goddamn wall. But at the end of the day, Bill Belichick is still Bill Belichick. And if they're not ready for Jared Sinden to be throwing the ball a million times a game, I think they're going to run it. And they were running it with Tom Brady a lot, so I wouldn't be surprised if Sony Michelle was a running bike who gets a lot of touches this year. And also another thing is the New England defense is still good. I know they lost a bunch of pieces, but Bill Belichick will just figure out how to make it work because that's what he always does. He figures out how to make it work. He makes the guys do their goddamn job. And Sony Michelle will do his job as my running back four on the roster. Now, a lot of wide receivers are going to go that I probably wanted to take. Now, we already have three wide receivers on the team. We have Julio, Godwin, and Robert Woods. So these guys are probably going to ride the pine and maybe eventually fly in if one of those guys ends up getting hurt. That's what the bench is about. If someone gets hurt, you're ready to throw them in. So we're going to go ahead and draft a wide receiver that I love in Deontay Johnson. Now, I talked about how I didn't really like Juju Smith-Schuster because I was worried about Big Ben's health. And why? that's also why I'd be worried about Deontay Johnson. If Big Ben gets hurt, Deontay Johnson's going to be a bum. But, 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 Deontay Johnson didn't really play that many games with Big Ben last season. He got that more of that connection with Duck Hodges, with Mason Rudolph, who's got, whose head got caved in by Miles Garrett. At the end of the day, Deontay Johnson showed his talent last year. I think if he gets 100 targets this year, he will have probably 70 receptions and 1,000 yards. Deontay Johnson's very talented. He will also get that slot work when Juju's not there. I think he's primed for a breakout season. I talked about him in a video where I talked all about Deontay Johnson a couple of days ago, so if you want to check that out, that was a great video as well. Shout out to Deontay Johnson. I think he's going to be great on the Steelers, and I think the Steelers really play well this year as long as Big Ben is the healthy quarterback of these Pittsburgh Steelers. Looking at the draft board now, after we made our selection of Deontay Johnson, carry on came off the board. Johnson and Johnson back-to-back Michael Jordan 96-97, followed by McCall Hardman, Marlon Mack, and Justin Jefferson. So right now, we probably want to go ahead and draft another running back because the running back that I wanted fell to me, and that is Matthew Burita of the Miami Dolphins. Now, the reason why I like Matt Burita is because last year he was kind of the two on that team, Mostert, Burita. They're kind of the pack, you know, pack and punch together, the thunder and lightning. They were just going with each other. They're working together. Now, he's going to be in the lead role with Jordan Howard. Him and Jordan Howard are going to work together, but in a kind of different way. Matt Burita is fast as fuck, boy. Matt Burita is going to run through and past the defense. Jordan Howard is the wrecking ball. He's coming in there like Miley Cyrus on top of that thing and smashing through them. And what we know about Jordan Howard is this guy has feet for hands. This guy has ice blocks for hands. He cannot catch the goddamn ball if you paid him and he gets fucking paid to catch the ball and he still can't do it. Matt Breida is going to be getting the pass catching opportunities. Now there is worried about Matt Breida's health. There is some worries. Now he typically doesn't play the full 16 game season, 14, 13 games. So he's going to miss some time. But at the end of the day, when he's in there, when he's healthy, he has the potential to blow a top 20 running back game, a top flex option type of game against these good situations. Now, he plays against defenses like the Patriots, the Jets, and the Bills. Now, the Bills defense is good. Like I said, the Patriots will probably figure it out, but he'll probably blow the Jets asshole wide open and score a million touchdowns on them. I think Matt Burita is a very talented running back, and I think he should be getting more touches this year when compared to the last. He typically will be around 2018 where he had 153 touches. I think that's where he would be statted at maybe 140 but around that area for Matthew Burita, I think he's a solid backup running back. So right now, after we went with Matt Burita, Latavius Murray came off the board, followed by... So after we went with Matt Burita, Latavius Murray came off the board, followed by Golden Tate, Darrell Henderson, Preston Williams, Jamal Williams, Tevin Coleman, Duke Johnson, Tyler Higby, Robbie Anderson, Matty Ice, a defense... Don't draft the defense before the last two picks. Curtis Samuel, Baltimore Ravens, Alshon Jeffrey, Jared Cook, Sammy Watkins, Jalen Rager, and Rashad Perryman. So now it is time to draft yet another wide receiver here. And we are going to go ahead and get a guy in Nikhil Harry who I actually think could have a bounce back season. Now his bounce back won't come from playing bad, more of getting hurt. Last year he only played in a couple of games because he missed a majority of the season due to injury. He only played in seven games and he wasn't getting that many targets. But what could happen is Jared Stidham could say, fuck you, Julian Edelman. I actually like throwing the ball to Nikhil Harry earlier, better. And Nikhil Harry was drafted to be a talented wide receiver. He was drafted number 32 to the New England Patriots, not this year, but last year. And that season was riddled with injuries. So I think Nikhil Harry was very talented coming out of college. And I think he could have a very, very successful season in New England. 
this year, especially since Billy B will figure out how to get him a lot of opportunities to be touching the ball. So after we went with Mr. Nikhil Harry of the New England Deflatriots, Austin Hooper can't board followed by the Buffalo Bills, the, the Tyrell Williams, and then the Steelers defense. So now we're going to go ahead and get our tight end, and that is either between Mike Gesicki or Hayden Hurst. It's kind of a coin flip. I think Gesicki played good last year. I think he breaks out even further this year. Hayden Hurst played good on the Baltimore Ravens. Now he moves to Atlanta where he's in Dirk Cutter's system, and Dirk Cutter loves the tight end position like I love tight ends on women. So I'm going to go with Hayden Hurst here of the Atlanta Falcons here. I think he's going to be a very, very, very safe pick. If you guys did enjoy that tight end joke, shout out to you. Click that goddamn subscribe button. It's free. I try not to jam it down your goddamn throat. But with that said, I want you guys to subscribe because it would really help me out. Now, looking at the draft board, it's going to be hard for you guys to see. So I'm going to have to move myself to the top lefty left of the screen. So after we went with Hayden Hurst, Aaron Rodgers came off the board, followed by Noah Fant, Matthew Stafford, Boston Scott, Jack Doyle, Michael Pittman, Alexander Madison, Zach Moss, Danny Dimes, Tony Pollard, Justin Jackson, Hunter Renfro, Antonio Gibson, Horsecock, Drew Locke, Jared Goff, Dallas Godard, Naheem Hines, and Chase Edmonds. So we're going to go ahead and get a running back before we have to draft our kicker and defense. So with our last pick, we're going to go with Mr. Let's see down here. There's actually a decent amount of running backs here that I actually like, but we're going to go ahead and go ahead and get, I just said go ahead like three times in a row, get Rock Armstead. Now, Rock Armstead didn't get much opportunity last year. He is Mr. Fuck, Mr. Leonard Fournette's backup. Sorry for cursing there. Rock Armstead is going to potentially get opportunities if Leonard Fournette gets hurt. If Leonard Fournette doesn't get hurt, he's not going to do anything. If Leonard Fournette, maybe he holds out, and maybe it's Rock Armstead season. Maybe he gets traded halfway through the year because they don't want anything to do with Leonard Fournette. These are all possibilities. Rock Armstead showed his talent in college, and he played pretty well last year with the opportunities given to him. So I'm going to go ahead and believe in Mr. Rocky Rock Armstead there with my 13th overall pick. Now we got two picks left after we went and got Rocky Rock Armstead to the squad. Rashad Penny can't board followed by A.J. Dillon, Baker Mayfield, and then A.P. Adrian Peterson. So we're going to go ahead and get our kicker and our defense. So first we're going to go with Justin Tucker, best goddamn kicker in the league, and then I'm going to explain to you guys how to go ahead and draft a defense. Now when you're drafting a defense, what you want to do is Google NFL schedule week one, find a defense playing a shitty offense week one. That's how you draft them. You don't have to draft anything else. You don't draft the defense to play good throughout the season. You just draft them to be good one week, and then if they're good the second week, they have a good matchup. You play them again. If it's a shit matchup, you cut them, and you add a new defense by watching all my videos. I've been making videos of about defenses every week, and before the season, I'll make a video on defense as well. So we're going to go with the highest-rated team. I have no idea who the Rams are playing week one. They're playing against the Dallas Cowboys, so that's probably not the best idea. The L.A. Chargers, I think, have a pretty good schedule against Cincinnati. They added to the defense a lot in free agency, so I think that it should be pretty clear that against a rookie quarterback week one, they could tear it up. So we got a B minus. The running back zero strategy gets a B minus on fantasy pros. To me, we did very good for this strategy, but I don't really love doing this strategy in a real draft. But let me know what you guys think about the running back zero strategy. So we went with Dak Prescott, David Montgomery, Raheem Mostert, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, Hayden Hurst, Robert Woods. Defense and kicker don't really matter. They do matter, but for the sakes of the video, they don't really matter. And then our bench is comprised of Cam Akers, Sony Michelle, Deontay Johnson, Matt Breida, Nikhil Harry, and Rock Armstead. So let me know down below in the comments what you guys thought about running back zero and who's your guys' favorite sleeper to draft late in your fantasy football draft. So let me guys let me know down below. I love each and every single one of you guys. Click on the video that's on me, the video to the lefty left, or the video below me, this video to the right, and my channel is at the bottom right. Please click that subscribe button. I love you all. I'll see you guys tomorrow with yet another banger of a video. Good boy.